I now call Alec Rowley to be followed by Bruce Crawford. Thank you, President Officer. Um, I certainly would not be able to support this budget today because I think it fails on a whole range of fronts that need to be tackled. Um, if I can refer to Sandra White earlier and talking about you know, the, the, the commitment to the NHS and somehow talking the NHS down, I would certainly say that, that from my own personal experience, my family's experience, um, the NHS has been there and we could never repay um, what the NHS has done for our family and our families up and down Scotland and every community that would say the same. But that does not mean that we don't question the, you know, the, the, the NHS was the greatest creation of the last century and in this century as politicians, regardless of what party you're in, we have a duty to stand up and fight and make the case for the NHS. I mentioned to Sandra White about the case of the lady this morning with the cancelled operation. I understand, or she, she suggested to me, there was ten cancellations this morning. I will be taking that up with the Health Secretary when I meet with her tomorrow. I will be calling for an inquiry into NHS 5 practice practices where another patient has died. Um, we saw the accident and emergency uh, time, waiting times that came out yesterday with NHS 5. Again, they were not acceptable. And the point is that Mr Swinney comes along here today and tells us that patient satisfaction is up, um, cleaning is up, accident emergency figures are up. Um, he, so it is a bit like the Emperor's clothing. We would expect the health service to be improving, but where it's not and where in the case of five if it's bouncing, bouncing from crisis to crisis, then we need to be able to, as elected politicians, speak up for that. Um, but I also want to touch on a number of other points in the way, not, not just now, sorry, and a number of other points. Mr Swinney talks about a fairer um, society and that the economic strategy is working, but that is one of the major failures of this budget, is that it is failing to ensure that everyone can enjoy the benefits in Scotland a stronger economy. 160,000 people that are presently unemployed in Scotland, they are certainly not reaping the benefits. Many more that are not registered as unemployed but are out of work and with no skills, not able to be able to get access to jobs that are there. We see um, in my own constituency, we see um, pods being built in Resyth and elsewhere to house workers coming from abroad and employers tell me they can't get the skills locally, whilst at the same time we have seen a 37% cut in college budgets since 2007, some £67 million. So that for me does not equate to some kind of fairness. I'll give way. Bob Doris. Thank you very much, Mr. Rowley. As others have said, I don't doubt the sincerity of, of, of Labour's speeches. It's merely the fact there has to be a budget agreed, ag agreed this afternoon. Tell me, how much money is the Labour opposition pledging for Scotland's colleges? Is it costed? How many places? Can you deliver it? Or is it a soundbite just to garner favour with whoever you're spoken to at any given time? What, we've, what we put forward today was £100 million for the National Health Service because we're saying that that is a key priority. In my case, in Fife, there is clearly a crisis within the National Health Service. £67 million taking out of the colleges over the last seven or eight years will not be put back in one budget. And that's the point that Ian Gray made. And I have to say, I have to, say to the Deputy um, First Minister that, that I am absolutely appalled at the attack that he makes today on local government. Um, right across Scotland, local authorities, and he knows this, local authorities are are absolutely struggling in terms of the budgets that they are actually trying to deal with. In education, in Fife case, for example, um, the deputy leader advises me that they've got a face with a bill at the end of last year for some £3.5 million for pension costs. There are many other costs that are there, and in every local authority, Councils are looking at cutting education budgets. There's no doubt about that. Now, I had always taken the Cabinet Secretary and the Deputy uh, First Minister at his word where he said he wanted to work with councils, but today he comes into this chamber and tries to politicise the relationship between local government and Scottish government, not recognising the major problems that local authorities are facing. When it comes to local government finance, 
year on year there has been real term cash cuts in local government. The council tax freeze has not been properly funded and as a result of that we have seen cuts taking place in frontline services and it is absolutely difficult to see how um, education will be able to um, continue with the level of services that they have with the types of budget cuts that, that are there at the present time. So certainly the offer that Mr Swinney makes today to talk to individual councils, I certainly would hope that the council in my area and council leaders and education spokespersons across Scotland are knocking on Mr Swinney's door and coming and presenting the facts to him. I I hope that they also will be able to present the facts to the public. We must move away from this phony war between local government and the Scottish government where the Teflon um, Cabinet Secretary and, and, and um, Deputy First Minister is prepared to blame local government but not prepared to take responsibility. Our teachers, our parents, but most importantly our children who are coming through the school system and can't get the jobs within the economy are not enjoying a share in the wealth of the Scottish economy. They deserve better, far better. Thank you very much.